Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So I'm going to talk about um, Sir Ratanji Tata. I'm in front of his London house, York House as it's called, uh, in the suburb of Twickenham. The River Thames is just behind the house. Obviously you can't see it from this angle. So um, uh, Sir um, Ratan was born in, in uh, Mumbai, India in 1871. Of course the city was then known as Bombay. So he later became known as Ratanji as in that uh, honorific suffix G was uh, appended to the end of his uh, first name. So he was from a Parsi family. Some of my viewers won't know who the Parsis are. The Parsis are a tiny ethno-religious community. Um, they believe in the Zoroastrian faith, quite possibly the first monotheistic religion in the world. They started out in Persia, as in Iran. So Parsi it, um, is another word for Persian. And they shifted to Gujarat in India when Islam came and persecuted them in Iran. Um, anyway, so uh, his father, um, um, Jamsetji uh, Tata, had founded a company, was a very prominent um, a businessman, had his fingers in various pies, and then now there's Tata Group, which is the biggest um, business um, uh, conglomerate in India. Um, what business isn't it in? All sorts of things. Um, well, uh, automotive manufacturing, you know, see Tata trucks, that's a big part of it. Construction, banking, really you name it, they do it. But those are some of the main things they do. Anyway, so back to uh, Ratan Tata. He had ooh, at least one brother. I'm not sure if he had any sisters. And um, he went to St. Xavier's College in, uh, in Mumbai. He became absolutely fluent in English. Um, I'm not sure which other languages he spoke. Obviously, Marathi is the main language there. But the, um, the Zoroastrians, they quite often use another language for their uh, religious ceremonies. Um, anyway, uh, so he, he got married to um, a uh, Parsi lady. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. Navaji Set. Maybe I've got that wrong. But unfortunately, they were not blessed with children. And as they had no natural progeny, they chose to adopt. So he adopted the um, son of a distant cousin. And they brought up that boy um, as their own. Uh, so it's very important that this person be a Parsi of full blood. Because many Parsis hold that if unless you're completely Parsi by ethnicity, then that's it. You are not a Parsi at all. Um, anyway, uh, so he prospered in business. He, he and his brother, but uh, he was not just avaricious, uh, he was in fact munificent, and so he uh, gave many uh, bounteous donations to uh, worthy causes. He founded the Indian uh, Scientific Institute in Bangalore, and uh, he uh, gave lots of money to alleviate the penury of the, the denizens of Mumbai. Um, and so he, he was handing out money the length and breadth of India. His father died in 1904, so they inherited that patrimony, but he and his brother had uh, just increased the family fortune. Uh, and then um, he moved to this country, and uh, so he purchased this house here. Um, so that was, it was considered, well, it was considered just inside London, this lovely leafy sub of near Alexander Pope, and various literary figures used to live in the 18th century um, and uh, he um, then he also had a place in St Ives in Cornwall the very southwest toe of England and then he um, died in 18 uh, sorry 1916 there's this marvelous um, display in the garden I filmed another occasion with um, lots of there's this statue well, they, I think they'd bought it from Italy of all these um, horses uh, leaping out of the waves as it were to do with one of the ancient Greek myths um, so his, his widow survived him by quite a few years and um, eventually the, the, they, they donated the house to the local council to, tw to Twickenham Borough Council. Twickenham is now part of Richmond Borough because London is divided into 32 boroughs. So this was Twickenham, Twickenham Town Hall for some time. It's still council offices for the Borough of Richmond. You can get married there, civil weddings there. So anyway, um, Parsis, they believe in the four sacred elements, earth, water, wind and fire. They mustn't bury their dead since that would um, desecrate the earth, nor would they cremate um, the deceased since that would uh, dishonor the fire and they can't just simply put them into water because that would defile the water. Well, you, they can put them in dachma or towers of silence, uh, the idea that they would be um, simply devoured by vultures are rather more prosaic and they're probably just munched by maggots and so on and rats. We don't want to think of them nibbling away your loved ones. There's various dachma in, in um, Mumbai, scarcely functioning, and um, in Pakistan, where there's a tiny Parsi community in, 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 in um, Karachi, I'm not sure that's still the case, or anywhere else in India, there used to be more. But they keep people well back to keep away ghoulish sightseers. Moreover, the, the, the stench must be um, noxious, just overpowering. 
Anyway, you couldn't ha do that here. That's not allowed. You must either um, inter the dead or indeed cremate them, which was very rare in those days. So they chose to bury him. There's a mausoleum at Brookwood Cemetery in the Parsi section, and I filmed outside there. So Brookwood is somewhere to the west of London, an enormous necropolis. Um, so he's got a very fine tomb there in a row with various other distinguished Parsis. Well, that's just a little bit about Sir Ratan Tata. Anyway, please subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I do online lessons. I do all sorts. I'm a tour guide in Londinium and I teach people online for history, politics, religious education, French, law, uh, geography. And um, oh, yes, I help people with editing documents, you know, dissertations, essays, theses and help them with elocution, interview preparation and so forth. All right, toodaloo.